This is all about the song. Welcome to the 109th episode of All About the Song. I am your host, Michael McDonnell, and thank you for joining us. On the podcast today, we have Michael Sleaf. Michael Sleaf is a dear friend of mine. He is the performing drummer in Sean Mendez, who has been doing a, a lot of stuff recently. They have a documentary, or Sean Mendez has a documentary. He is doing a Wonder Residency, and the first video was out last week. It was a really amazing video, and there's, I believe there's more to come, so that is really cool. Also, Sean Mendes has an entire album releasing on December 4th. So there's a lot of cool things that Michael Sleeth is a part of, and you will see coming up. And this is our third podcast we've done together. Michael is a dear friend of mine. We met on the first day of junior kindergarten. We have been friends ever since. It has been such a cool thing to watch. Somebody so near and dear to me, uh, just, I mean, their dream came true. And it's just a wonderful thing to watch. And with this podcast, it's an amazing thing to document. The first episode we did was episode five. It is available audio only on the Sounds Like Song Network YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out. That's his origin story. And then episode 69, we talk about, uh, it was done right after he performed at the Rogers Center in Toronto. And those two episodes are absolutely fantastic. This one is loose and fun. We talk about what Mike has been up to over this period of COVID and how he has been keeping himself busy you know, uh, um, a guy like Michael Sleeth is playing hundreds of gigs a year. Obviously, with COVID, that's not the case. And we discuss things like practicing, and it's loose and it's fun, and I think you'll really enjoy it. I'd also like to say thank you very much to everyone that watched our first episode of the video format of All About the Song with Tyler Shaw. The comments have been absolutely fantastic. I have heard from people all around the world. It has been a really cool thing to see. And I'd like to thank the whole Sounds Like Songs Network team. Brian Leung, Daniel Benjamin, Dana Pierce, and Tal Weisman. It was really cool for us to get the first one out, and we're really excited to bring you an episode each and every week. Also, Tal Weisman's podcast debuted Everything But The Song. His first guest was me which was very enjoyable, and part two comes out in two days from now. So be sure to check that out. Today we are brought to you by some sponsors, which is a very, very awesome scenario and situation to be in. Hailed Coffee, which is a fantastic coffee house in Toronto. They're located at Girard and Bay, just behind College Park. Their coffee is constantly among the top 10 coffee houses in Toronto. They have ground beans, they've got coffee you can purchase, there's chocolate, there's cookies. We've tried them all, they're really, really good. It is a really hard time and winter is coming up, so they are doing online orders. So be sure to check out Hailed Coffee. We would like to say again, thank you so much to them for being a sponsor of All About the Song. Shop local, support those around you. Let's keep all the businesses open during this time. And especially if you are a coffee drinker, you've got to try Hailed. Thank you to Richard Atkin. He's a friend of the podcast, and we're working on a little bit of a secret project. But Richard is a person that we've met that has been really, um, he really wants to support the community, the artistic community in Canada. He himself has graduated from music production, and he works for an animation company. Rich is the founder and CEO of Flickly, which is a premier video animation studio. He works with large brands and enterprises across the globe, and he'll be working with us all about the song and the Sounds Like Song Network. So we are really excited to see this partnership flourish. Learn more about Rich and his work at Flickly at flickly.com. It's spelled F-L-I-K-L-I dot com and connect with him on LinkedIn. We have had 
some fantastic conversations so far, and it has been really interesting and awesome to see the potential growth of this podcast and to have someone that believes in us from the beginning is a really fantastic thing and it makes us feel like we're doing the right thing with this podcast and with the help of this community, especially with Richard, we're really excited to continue to push the boundaries of this podcast and bring to you really quality entertainment and have you meet a lot of wonderful artists and musicians and share their stories on this podcast. So here we are, episode 109 of All About the Song, featuring Mike Slick. Michael, Hello. thank you for coming in and pitch hitting for us. Thank uh, you for it's my it's my dream to be your relief <laughs> <laughs> your relief interviewer. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, okay, obviously like COVID-19 has struck, we're in the midst of it. You've had a unbelievable career trajectory which we've talked about on a couple podcasts and mm-hmm. we'll, we'll go through it again in in, uh, in in a more brief way. But what's what's it been like for you to have everything just come to like a screeching halt? It's been interesting, um, to say the least. I think you really have to uh, you really have to reassess your um, your trajectory. And so, like in this sort of instance, I've really had to move things online. I guess a lot. You know, yeah. you have to really do the uh, you know figure out ways to still have a career. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, <laughs> you know. I mean, but it's, it's been very. I I find it's been very interesting seeing what all the different musicians are doing, and because everybody's in the same boat. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, so it's definitely a great learning opportunity. Yeah, and stuff. Well, I mean, at the beginning of this, you started doing uh, a lot of like Instagram Live. Mm-hmm. I mean, would we have ever imagined? And I think I said this to you. Like, imagine the first person that ever recorded you in like the first studio, telling them that in seventeen years you'll be rigging up an entire drum kit to stream and record audio into your cell phone yeah. to broadcast around the world. Yeah, like, it's crazy. It's kind of nuts. Those little iRig devices are lifesavers. Really cool. <laughs> well, Very cool. But it was like, I mean, it's been kind of amazing to, to watch different levels of adaptness. Mm-hmm. Also, there's a lot of artists that have like done some pretty wild things. Yeah. Like, uh, one of the, do you know Luna Lee? Have you ever seen any? She's just been doing like these, like, she plays like a hundred instruments and like just doing like these like videos and stuff like that. And it's become like the craziest thing. And there's all wow. sorts of different, different things that people are doing. And sometimes it's like, yeah, this is a great idea. And sometimes there's artists that have just done nothing. And it's like, this also might yeah. be a great idea too. Yeah. I think a lot of artists are really taking this opportunity to just like disappear for a little while. Yeah. You know, maybe some of them were already like a little bit overexposed and it's like, Good opportunity to uh, take a break. Yeah, no <laughs> take a breather. Well, you, I mean, you came, you were on a break when mm. this started. Yeah. We were technically weren't really going to be doing too much this year anyway. Right. So um, I guess it couldn't have happened at a better time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I mean, it's got to be weird to be in a position where you were off mm. and then the world was off with you all yeah. of a sudden. Like that that's gotta be kind of bizarre because I mean you were chilling at home and yeah. taking a like the way I looked at it, it was almost like all your weekends for three years, you kind of like cashed them in all at once in yeah. a sense. Well, it's been kind of interesting, you know, even t- speaking with uh other people that I work with and stuff, like um nobody's been around for a summer. <laughs> yeah. You know? So like uh, uh a good friend of mine on tour, he just got married in um what, September or something like that. Um, and he says this is the longest he's ever spent with his now wife. Wow! In their entire relationship. So, yeah. So it's been kind of interesting. Yeah. I realized how hot my apartment gets in the summer, <laughs> 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 and I had no idea about but, that. But well, okay. So when you met your partner, <clears throat> mm-hmm. you met her while touring, mm-hmm. and since then you have toured ever since. Yeah. So I mean, this is probably the most you spent. Pretty much at yeah. home. Yeah. Like. It's kind of, it's got to be. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> she always puts the dish, 
the dishwashing <laughs> liquid under the sink. And I'm like, we're going to need it again. <laughs> so every single time I go to wash dishes, I'm like, where's the dishwashing liquid? Yeah. Oh, under the sink again. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things I learned. Oh yeah, well I mean, but it's true. Like it's it's like so such make or break time in a yeah. sense. Like you're really getting to know the people around you. Mm, yeah. um, I think my girlfriend still likes me, but yeah. it, Fion- it, your fiance, my fiance, hey you too, buddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so music stuff. Yeah, you've been just kind of like hustling like crazy for the last little year. Like the yeah, last little years. The last seven, eight years have just been like nonstop. Yeah. And it's gotta be, I don't know, it's gotta be so unique to just just have like such a wild pause in a sense. Yeah, it is very weird. Like, um, I mean, I haven't, you know, like a pause as far as like the, you know, the shows and the gigs and stuff like that. And like essentially, like, and kind of recording to that point, you know, like there's not a lot of, you know, I don't know, for a bit. For a minute, there was like some recording stuff, but it, I don't know. Now it feels like things are really <laughs> starting to pause now or something like that. Because yeah. I think as soon as like this whole thing sort of like came around, everybody was struck. You know, everybody's like, okay, we'll do like Instagram live things. We'll do Zoom calls. We'll do this and this and this and this. And then, then I think that has kind of got to the point where it's getting a, you know, like nobody wants to watch another Instagram live. Like I think, no. you know, for a minute it was like, this is awesome. This is awesome. Like we have some sort of content we can produce yeah. or some sort of content we can like take in, but like Yeah, and it nah. was it was cool to see like Bruce Springsteen and Dave Matthews yeah. and like everyone in the world using the same platform. Yeah. I also do feel like there might have been like everyone that works around the artist probably saw a scenario where they were like, "Wait, we're giving it away for free. This is how yeah. we all pay our mortgages and stuff." And now we're just going to give it away for free. This doesn't make sense. Yeah, and so this stopped. But then now it's like this: like live shows, it might be like twenty twenty one. Yeah, like <laughs> so you did the Roger Center. Yeah, fifty five thousand people. Mm. How would you do that now? Like it would be weird. Like you couldn't. How many could you fit in there? Like at <sighs> best case scenario, like sixteen thousand. Like yeah, and then like what every other seat. Yeah, and then you'd be like. It's not filled. Yeah. It'd be kind of bizarre. Well, we were just watching that Coldplay. Yeah. That Coldplay movie last night. Yeah. Head oh. full of dreams. Head full of dreams. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It's 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 brutal <laughs> because you watch that kind of stuff and you're just like handshakes, high fives, hugs, yeah. sweaty, just waves of people all screaming and yelling and like all oh, that stuff. You just can't do it. Yeah. It's just, it's bizarre. You know, with with the drums, with you've kind of developed like a home setup in a sense. Yeah, so, well, so I've you, always, you know, I've always like had that sort of like situation. Yeah, but like, um, yeah, I've just been practicing. <laughs> yeah, like I, it always, I always find being a musician, um, even if there's not work like happening or something like that, there's always something you can do mm-hmm. that like feels sort of like work. You may not be getting paid for it, and it, like you know, it may not be like instant pay. Yeah, but like that's a good thing about being a musician. You just like you always can work towards your craft. Yes. Which in turn may help your financial situation <laughs> later also, on. Also, yeah, no, but you, if, you, if, you're, if you're not prepared for, for something that goes wrong or something and you can't recover, mm-hmm. and I mean, when we used to do like shows when we were like 15 and 16, like you'd see a drummer drop their stick and it was like, they'd like stand up and be like, everyone stop. Like, <laughs> and, and you got to learn, you know, it's, it's those hours behind the scene that allow you to figure out you know, the response to an issue that yeah. you're having. And those those aren't things that you can get paid for immediately. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you've been a very disciplined practicer, though. I like a good practice. Yeah. and you've, <laughs> I, you, I love to practice. You keep, like, a pretty good regimen. Yeah. Yeah, well, I play every day. Yeah. Maybe not today, but <laughs> maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, 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 we got it. We let things get away from us last night, which is good. But, I mean, but, and, and the thing is, is that when you are rehearsing, are you, is it like conscious or unconscious? Like, how do you kind of go? It's like, do you have like a, a, like a project or an, an ideas to something that you want to accomplish based on like a drummer or a book? Or It's it really, really, I don't know. Sometimes it'll be like, like, well, I think that's the struggle. Like, so there'll be days where it's like, well, what am I going to practice today? Mm-hmm. What am I going to work on? Like, 
I've like somewhat mastered all these other things. What am I going to possibly do? And yeah. this is just like, you know, this is just like always the thing. Like, okay, yeah. what, what can I work on? What can I do? So I always, what I do a lot is like I'll watch videos and stuff um, and literally sit there with a pen, pen and paper, maybe a lovely tuna sandwich or something like that. You know, <laughs> maybe I have a sandwich, maybe I have like, you know, a notepad and stuff like that. And I'll yeah. watch these videos and watch like clinics and stuff like that. And I literally sit there and take notes about all the things that I should work on. And then take that, maybe finish up my tuna sandwich. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and then sit behind the drums and just go through each different different part. Yeah. So currently, what am I working on? <laughs> we talked about this last night. The, the one, two, three, one, two, the three, one, four. The one, two, three. This is from a drummer by the name of um, Billy Cobham. Okay. <clears throat> so he had this whole thing where... Um, Instead of, you know, like like Phil, instead of Phil's just going, do, 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 do. Um, and you're just kind of moving around the drums like that. Yeah. Having, like, viewing the drum set as more of this, like, this movement sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so the most, like, the, the easiest way to, like, start doing it, or, like, how you should start to look at it and then expand. Right. Um, is sort of if you do, I don't know if there's a lot of, are there a lot of drummers that listen to your podcast? There's a lot more? of drummers that listen to you, <laughs> so yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you go. And we have video, so your hands the hands do actually make work sense, this time. but yeah. we do have audio as well, so yeah. I'll try to narrate if you get ahead of yourself. So essentially, you're going right, left, right, left, right, left. Or for the drummers, this is called a single stroke roll. Okay. Um... <laughs> And then, so your left hand is going to go through three different sound sources, and your right hand is going to go through four different sound sources. So you'd have boom, 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 boom. But I'm not even doing it right. Boom, gong, 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 gong. So with your left hand, you're going like one, two, one, three, three four. four. And then your right hand, you're going one, two, three, one. Yeah, one, yeah. But then, then so if you are doing it with rights, well, sorry, with right leading, it would be like the sound you would hear is boom, 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 boom. And then your left hand is going boom, 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 boom. But like sort of do it like so that like, uh, I think it's kind of cool to do one hand like ascending and then the other hand descending. Or so it's like going that. like da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay. So it's like um, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. I can't even figure that right now. I was excited to see. Yeah, you pull that, that was going to be a difficult one. I could do it on the drums, but yeah, oh, yeah. but then, but then from there, then so that's like the basic kind of thing. Then you can pick something to do with your feet, and then maybe you do it as maybe do them as triplets. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, you know, like some something like that kind of vibe. Maybe you do them as double strokes. So, <laughs> so basically, what you're saying is the first live gig that you get a drum solo on, like that <laughs> that's you're just the first thing out. that you should do. <laughs> yeah, you're just gonna go nuts. They're gonna like, yeah. Mike Slate on the drums, <laughs> and I'll be like, hey, look at this really cool exercise I've been working on. <laughs> Everybody wants to hear exercises in drum solos. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, of course. That's the main thing. But that you, you know hear. what the thing is, is that like doing those exercises is. A drum solo. Like, if you mm. break down, like, even the craziest, um, just, like, free expression on the drums, if you have that technique and you've worked out those things, it's in there. Yeah. And you can you can hear it if you're paying attention to it. Like, you're like, oh, that's a paradiddle or, like, the movement that they're doing. And it's becoming more and more popular with, like, uh, like drummers like J.D. Beck, for example, mm. where, like, he's he's hitting the notes, like, 30-second notes and stuff like that. And, like, people are, like, following the transcription. Yeah. And they're... They're entertained with the way that he's playing, but they're also entertained with how he's doing it in a theory level. Right. And I thought that that was very weird because like when we were growing up, um, unless you were studying the drums, you would never care if like Travis Barker, you're like, oh, wow, that's a 30 second note and a paradiddle and he's doing this with his hand. Like it just sounded fucking awesome. Yeah. And we were just listening to it to be like, wow, that's so cool. And I think there's a lot more theory coming. There's always theory, but I think that people are more interested in it. Mm -hmm. Or I've just in quarantine become <laughs> really, really uh, my my uh, my interests are becoming very niche. Yeah, one or the other. But I mean, the thing I the thing that I think is the most important thing about all this stuff is like you, you know, like you mentioned this guy, the JD Beck guy. Yeah, you you never like you, you never watch one of his videos, and then you're like. 
oh, wow, like, did you hear how good his flamacues were? <laughs> no, <laughs> or like, no. wow, he really did a nice patty fluffa there. Everything he's doing is just like fluid as part of his like vocabulary as like a musician. Absolutely. So, all like, um, I think the point of doing all these exercises and practicing and stuff like that is so that you don't think about it. <clears throat> yes. So like, you know, for instance, we were talking about that thing. I'm not comfortable with it yet. It's Repertoire. like I learned a new word, but I still can't pronounce it well. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? So like, hopefully someday and hopefully someday soon, uh, you could just like bust it out and whatever. And yeah. it's like cool. But like, People wouldn't be like, hey, that's really cool. Yeah. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, you know? I really, I noticed what you were doing there. Like, <laughs> you, you don't, you and know, if like, that guy ever came up to you at a show, you're probably not going to like want to continue yeah. the conversation farther than like 30 seconds because yeah. you're, you're charting into a pretty nerdy territory. Very nerdy. <laughs> we just got very nerdy. That was extremely yeah, we did. That's nerdy. That's okay though. I think we kept it all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did want to ask you about, because I mean, your schedule has been so chaotic over the last five years, but in particular the last three years, the last tour that you were on, mm-hmm. Sean Mendes the tour. Sean Mendes the tour. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you traveled like literally around the world multiple times. Mm. Mm. Now that we've had some time to like reflect, are you starting to like kind of pinpoint fond memories and things that stick out over others? Loads of fond memories. Um, that was an incredibly fun tour. Um, yeah, it was very cool. <laughs> Specifically? <laughs> yeah, like, okay, like, because you were like, like, you were in cities, like, for just touching in, going and stuff like that. Yeah. Favorite place on the tour? Um, I had a really lovely time in Australia. My, yeah. my then girlfriend. <laughs> I guess now fiance. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> me and my me and my fiance. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. I it, I'm not using it. My girlfriend. Yeah, my girlfriend and girlfriend, I were in yeah. Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, and just crazy stuff, man. <laughs> we like we got to go on a really nice boat and like um, I've been to Australia a couple times now with Sean, and there's this island called. Uh, I don't remember what the island's called. Oh, it's good. just off the coast. Uh, like, it's just off Perth. Okay. So, um, and this island is the only place in the world that has this animal. That's, it's like, I don't know who decided this, but it's one of, it's one of the cutest animals in the world. Okay. It's called, they're called quakas. So, if you Google quakas, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's literally the cutest animal. And what, what people do is they go on this island, and it's only on this island. Yeah. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure in the in the world, the only way you can find them, the only place you can find them is yeah, yeah, yeah. in this island. Ah, I thought I knew that name of I can't remember. I, as soon as I leave here, I'm gonna remember. Oh, the of name course, of yeah. That's how um, it goes. So what people do is they go and take selfies with this adorable animal. Uh-huh. So we took this beautiful boat with Heath Ledger's dad. <laughs> we hang out with Heath. It's pretty random. Uh, so yeah, we were hanging out with Heath Ledger's dad and his stepmom mm-hmm. on this boat, and then the boat like pulled up like outside this island, and yeah, and we took some selfies with Kuakas, <laughs> the cutest little rodent you've ever seen. <laughs> it's an adorable rodent. What's it like to have Victoria travel with you while you're on the road for so long? It's cool. Um, she gets like she she came out to a, a lot of places on the last tour. Uh, and then she, like, there's always, like, a couple spare bunks, so, like, she'll come on the bus when we're in the States and stuff, and um, it's awesome. Yeah. It's what the one of the hard things uh, I find about always being on the road is that, like, you get to experience it with the other people that you're with, and I'm fortunate enough to have, like, you know, amazing people on the road and stuff, but, yeah. like, um, it kind of sucks when you can't share it with anybody else. So you'll yeah. be like, it's almost it's almost like it didn't happen, you know? Right. If she wasn't there, I'd be like, oh, you, I went on the boat and like, it's this really cute animal, you know? But like, if she's not there, it's sort of like, I just uh, kind of experience it. So Absolutely. it's a lot of fun having, having my lady out. Yeah, totally. And it's not like you're gone for three weeks either. Mm. Like these are, these are big jumps. Mm. Playing so many shows that you have, you've been on the bill. You've been on bills with world... Famous artists and stuff like that. Who are some of the artists that kind of like, you obviously knew who they were, but you saw their performance and you're like, oh my goodness, like 
Because we, we were kind of discussing that with Coldplay last night, where yeah. I went to the show with our friend Danny Reiner and um, Alessi Cara, who is um, part of their management roster. We were performing, and we kind of went in with the idea of being like, yeah, and then we'll watch Coldplay, and you know, maybe we'll sneak out, have a beer, go back to Toronto. Yeah. And then we saw Coldplay, and it was like incredible. And we were like, you know, jumping and singing along, and it was one of the best concerts I've ever been to. Yeah. What artists did you have that with? Um, we've done, we've done a lot of, uh, what have we done? We've done a handful of shows with Justin Timberlake and he's always like, <sighs> his drummer, I don't know. I would call him a friend. His name's Brad <laughs> I don't know if he <laughs> considers me a friend, but, uh, his drummer is mm, unbelievable. I did this thing at NAMM with, uh, it was actually really cool. It was like, um, Roland had this, NAMM, for those of you who don't know, is a like music con- uh, convention. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's like I invited you forever. Thank you. I, I had he a gig. didn't come. I know. Sorry. He didn't come. But I, I, I did say next year, which won't happen either. So Yeah, it's can, totally canceled. But but you I mean Nam on its own, like the, uh, even going cool. yeah, is so cool. Yeah. 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 And then so Roland, I did a bunch with Roland while I was there. Yeah. And they set they we did this like interview where I was being interviewed by this percussionist named Aaron uh, Eckhart. Okay. Yeah, Aaron Eckhart, um, who plays with like Eminem and uh, like everybody. I don't know. <laughs> like I'm thinking about it. I yeah, he plays with Eminem and like all these other people. But then I was I was sat beside Brian Fraser Moore. Okay. So it was like me and then two of the biggest drummers oh, ever. Wow. And I'm just sort of sitting there, and they're like telling all these stories about when they played with like Whitney Houston and when they played with like. You know, all these crazy people. Um, so that was really cool. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, we were Favorite talking about shows. artists. Yeah. Favorite shows. Also, I wanted to ask about the Justin Timberlake. Was this the tour where he had, like, the open fire pit in, like, the middle? No, we didn't do that one. Okay. okay. That was Francesco. Right. Okay, cool. That was a cool tour. Did you see that show? I watched a documentary on it. Um, Man of the Woods. Yeah, Man of the Woods, uh, which Francesco Yates opened on, yeah. who you formerly played with. Mm. The artists were, they did, like, a rig rundown, mm. and the artists were talking about the temperament of their instruments because of going from like coolness of the arena to all of a sudden beside the fire. And they're saying like the guitars all tuned down like a half step and stuff wow. like that. It was, it was really interesting just, and like, I mean, you go to a show, you see the show, you experience the show, but there's like a whole other experience of like how it and what it takes to operate yeah. an experience like this. Sean's guitar tech says that it's, Hit the tunings on his guitar change uh, even when people come in the room. Wow. Like, um, it'll be like one thing when it's like an empty arena. Yeah. And then when you put like 20,000 people in there or something, it changes, like the guitars are literally out of tune or wow. something. Wow. I watched a Rush documentary and they said that they have to compensate in the winter for when people wear jackets and sweaters and stuff. Wow. They have to increase the volume like 10% right. because there's just so much more uh, absorption in the room. Yeah. Which is incredible. But I mean, like, we also know that, like, when you put a bed in an empty room, like, it just changes everything. Mm-hmm. Like, it just sucks up so much of the acoustics. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, no, no, it, Justin Timberlake, I have not seen him live, but I think that, that that's one of the shows that would just yeah. be, like, three hours of something you'd never forget. Yeah. It's an unforgettable experience. When you go to shows like that, can you turn off your brain to not analytically look at, like, what they're doing and just be like, wow, what a great show. I have problems with them. Like, that. that's, uh, the MD is this guy, he's a bass player named Adam Blackstone. Ooh. And, th- like, all those arrangements are just crazy. So whenever I watch them, I'm kind of like, oh, I wonder if I could, like, suggest this for, like, Sean. Like, that. Like so I just watch it, I'm like, like, <laughs> thinking of all the things that I could possibly borrow. <laughs> <laughs> but th- I mean that's how that's how they learned. Yeah. Like that's how people learn. Like yeah. you you find the things that you enjoy and I mean especially with like a live show you got to you got to take elements that just like enhance it so that you know it is what you heard on the the record but it's also just extra. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that was a cool one. <laughs> what else we got? We did some stuff with Sting. Um and I met Vinny Kal- uh, Cayuda. Yeah, yeah, We were yeah. talking about this last night. Who's your, who's your favorite drummer of all time? Whoop. He's up there. Yeah. He's crazy. He's like world, you know, he's sort of like known as one of being one of the guys. Yeah. Um, and I met him. He's really cool. He was wearing 
really high top Nikes. <laughs> it was really Who's Sting. No, uh, Vinny. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I had just met Travis Barker before that. I don't know why I'm going on the this, but it's. I feel like it's relevant. I feel like you. Yeah, you gotta skip over your childhood hero. Like, oh yeah, and <laughs> I was introduced like one of Sean's security guards. We used to be Travis's security guards, right? So. I'm a huge Blink-182 fan, yes. as I think you are. Mm-hmm. And specifically, a huge Travis Barker fan. And then, so he's like, hey, like, I'll set up a meeting with uh, with Travis. Like, just like, hang out by... Does the security guard have a sore throat? <laughs> he kind of talks like that. <laughs> All right, brother, just like, hang out there. <laughs> um, and so we were doing the American Music Awards. Yeah. And w- like, the way it always... This was at... Uh, it's at the Nokia Theater in, okay. in, in LA. They do a lot of these things. Or maybe it's called the Microsoft Theater now. I think it's called the Microsoft Theater. It's hard to keep track. It's hard to keep track. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, so inside, there's like a big hall kind of thing. And then yep. they have like all this pipe and drape kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. like the bands and like dancers and all that kind of stuff are just in this big hall. And then the artists, or at least like the big artists, have all these like nice trailers kind of outside. Yeah. So Travis had his own trailer. He was playing with the chain smokers that day. Um, and then, uh, so Sean's like, I come and say, I'm like, just like, introduce me to Trump, please. Like, yeah, uh, just a couple minutes. Like, just give me a couple minutes with him. I just like want to talk to him. And then, so he's like, okay, Travis is about ready to see you. Um, just like stand outside Sean's trailer and I'll come get you when, whenever. So I was just like standing there so nervous. Like I was going to go in by myself too. It was, it was just, just going to be me and Travis. And I was like. So nervous. I'm like, oh my God, what do I say to him? Like, what, what if I don't have anything to say? Like, what or if what I do joke? you say everything? Yeah. <laughs> and then and then he came over. He's like, all right, Travis is ready for you, brother. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. So then I went in and he's like, he introduced me to Travis. And I was in Travis's trailer and he had like this little practice set up. Yeah. Um, and then Travis was like, oh, have a seat. So I like sit down and he was like behind the practice kit. And, I, and then he's like, so you're a drummer and whatever. And we just had like a really nice conversation. And I was like, what do you do to like warm up before shows and stuff like that? And he started showing me all this stuff. And then the, uh, <laughs> and I think I said, I don't know, it all happened. I was there for maybe five minutes and it happened so fast. And I probably said stupid things. <laughs> I don't even know what I said. And then I was sort of like, okay, I need to get out of here. Like, you know, I've yeah. done, I've done what I wanted to do. It's time to move on before I say something like, horrible. I love you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, you're the reason you I play <laughs> drums. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, and then, so then I was like, anyway, I don't want to keep you. It was really nice to see you. And then I left, and that was on high. I was like, I can meet it. I can meet anybody right now. Well, because because I was gonna say like, you know, you have these like, you have dreams of meeting your heroes, and then when it happens, like, it's gotta feel. Like incredible, but also almost surreal in a sense. Yeah, because like the deed is done. Like yeah. you know, Travis. Bar- we we waited in line at Much Music to get in to see them, mm-hmm. and we were the last group not to get in. And we like chased their van down the road, and yeah. like it was so much of our childhood to to be able to meet somebody, but also meet them as a peer. Yeah, I guess it's got to be. Yeah, be on incredible. the same gig with them. Well, do you remember, remember when we met um, Dave Backish from Sum Forty One at uh, we were at Iguana Studios? And he came oh, in. Oh, right. I forgot about that. There was something that he Brown did. Brown Sound. Yeah, Brown <laughs> Sound. There's something he did that I thought was so cool. Because it was you, Matt Giffen, keyboardist extraordinaire, and mm-hmm. myself. And he came in. And the three of us obviously just got like so excited. Yeah. And because, uh, you know, at 13, like, you know, All Killer No Filler was, that was huge. The album, album, yeah. You know, like intimate and interactive. Like that was just such a massive album for us. Mm-hmm. And when we were talking to him, like he probably saw the look of our faces on extreme excitedness. Yeah. And then he asked, he's like, what age are you guys? And we were all like 26. And he like, in his head, I think he's probably figured it out. He's like, okay, you were 13 when this happened. Nah. And he was like, okay, let's go. And it was you funny because he just kind of like, he was like, all right, I'll, let's do this. And yeah. it was like, I, I, I always remembered that because it was just so, it's so genuine and so nice mm. because he recognized that he was probably like a big hero, like a yeah. big hero of ours because of our age demographic. Like, and he's probably done it like a thousand times, but it was really cool for him to be like, okay, let's do this. Yeah. Like, let's make your day. Yeah. And, uh, and it did. And it was like, I, I just thought that it was so, so gracious of him. Yeah. Because he was just showing up to like, wasn't he Pick buying a, a good car or, or something? Or yeah, he, he was, was borrowing a pedal and stuff like that. Mm. And he was gonna—I think he was gonna like work at the studio or, right. or something like that. And then he joined some forty-one again. And 
yeah. left and traveled the world. And stuff. Yeah. But but yeah, no, it's 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 incredible when people are gracious like that. Yeah. Because it it means it means so much. Yeah. And it's cool to watch uh, you kind of enter this this atmosphere in a sense. Like you've done a bunch of. Um, what do you call it? You're not the, I was going to say valedictorian, but you're not. But you're doing like commencement speeches for, for the school board for Toronto. I'm not up here. Which is cool, but that's I pretty awesome. I, I, know you, I know you don't like. I'm not a great, I'm not a great talker. You're, yeah, but it's pretty cool that like there are kids that were in our high school, in grade nine like we were. Mm-hmm. And now you're the guy saying to them like, follow your dreams. Our other friend, Kristen, the astronaut, is also. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tough, tough gig to follow. But, yeah, uh, yeah. So Canadian I, I, <laughs> I always get put on things with her, and she's like, I don't know. She would like. I don't even know what degree she has. It's, she has some. She has a lot of them. She has some crazy astronaut degree. Yeah. She like, <laughs> and then works I'm like, the Canadian space. Oh, yeah. Arm. yeah. <laughs> I'm a drummer. Well, no, but but also like I mean that, that's pretty imagine. It, it's pretty uh, amazing that it happens because of meeting Brown Sound and having him do it to us. And look how we felt at 26. Yeah. Now you're doing it to these kids at like 14. And it's got to be, uh, it will take time. But I think that you being gracious to, to do things like this is going to be really interesting in 15 years from now to see the drummer in the up-and-coming international band yeah. being super excited to meet you and wanting to leave in five minutes so that he doesn't say the wrong thing to you <laughs> and say, I was in grade nine at Marsh McLuhan and you, 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 know, you were my graduate teacher. You know, like, yeah, and, yeah. And, and what's interesting is, is that you're, you're, you're setting those groundworks not to be praised in 15 years, but to inspire uh, kids. Like, yeah. That's really cool. Well, I think, I think like, we were talking about this last night as well. Um, there, I, I feel like in uh, like in the high school sort of like whenever we kind of started like really playing music, yeah, I feel like there's so few uh, kids like actually pursuing instruments and stuff like that. Right. So as a drummer and as a musician, I feel like a moral responsibility to like get people to play music. Yeah. You know, like I think it's like because man, we've had such a good time. Yes. You meet cool people. Meet yeah. Cool, meet girls. <laughs> well, just two. <laughs> We're marrying them. Uh, the thing that I think is really cool is that when we were in high school, and it was also talked about in the Coldplay documentary we watched, they were in university in the year 2000, and they said there were like six bands. Mm. And with us, there were like eight bands. Yeah. Like everyone played an instrument, everyone was moving around, uh, and it was uh, really great, and it was cool because I think our teachers recognized that we were educating ourselves uh, within the education we were supposed to get. Yeah. Like we, were, we were really using the time we had together wisely to create things that we now do to this day. Yeah. And I think it's really important, and I think it's really cool that you're giving back. Well, this is a very specific thing <laughs> that I'm about to say. But I notice when I'm practicing, so I'm right-handed. Yeah. So my right hand is a lot stronger than my left hand. Mm-hmm. So I'm... Like I'll learn things like right hand lead it, right hand lead, and then have to go back and learn them left hand. But in order for me to be able to play them with my left hand, I use my right hand to like teach my left hand. So like if I'm doing something, I'll be like, okay, let's try it here. And then if I don't get it right away, I'll be like, wait, what was that again? Yeah. So I think as older musicians and stuff like that, we're the right hand. <laughs> And young children growing up are the left hand. And I think it makes everybody better when you like share knowledge. Also, I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, but like I think it's important once you like figure things out, teach the people who are coming up and like motivate them and push them because then you're gonna have, you know, like your world, your world is gonna be better. Absolutely. And I'd like to particularly uh, point out the young drummer in uh, New York. Musician dude, 104. <laughs> He's a great guy. He's so cool. And uh, I think it's like amazing that not only have you gone on, like had him brought onto like your Instagram live and you're showing him and just like, just responding to him and stuff like that. Like it's so cool. And what I love about his Instagram page 
is all of our friends following him and yeah. commenting. <laughs> and that's the best part about it is, is that like he, he obviously looks up to you as a musician and he's like, he's just got like this really cool hunger and it reminds me of when we were that age. Yeah. And it's amazing to see like, you know, Tommy, the lead singer of your uh, first band, Teeter, <laughs> writing him and being like, oh my God, like you made my day. Like you're yeah. doing the drum cover of a song from a band that broke up 11 years ago. Yeah. And it's like, I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is just so cool. He's very inspiring. He works he very is. hard and like, you know, he's always posting content and stuff and like, you can tell he's really practicing. Even in like the few months that I've known him, I've noticed so many improvements in his playing yeah. and stuff. And he's like, yeah, man, he's on the he's on the right path. <laughs> well, it, it is, it's really cool that he's doing it and, and he's been recognized for it. Mm-hmm. Even just to visit our friends, but but you know, you in particular, but it's cool to watch him go through the Sean Mendez catalog catalog of songs, live songs, yeah. trying out different breakdowns and stuff like that. And then having you be like, that's exactly it. Or yeah. actually I do this or like hopping on together and you can like show him. And yeah. I remember in like 2007 when uh, just got Facebook having, and I think I talked to you about this in a podcast before, but we were talking about uh, like Our Lady Peace, the first song on the album. It was like, is that Double Kick or is it Tom? Oh, yeah. And then our friend Rodney was like, oh, let's just ask him. And he Facebook uh, wrote oh, to yeah. Jeremy, Taggart Jeremy Taggart and asked him, we're like, we were having this debate. And he wrote back in like seven minutes. Yeah. And he answered, he was like, uh, Floor Tom on the album, Double Kick Live. And we were like, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we are quarantined and we are inside and it's so different, but it is amazingly inspiring even for me to see this young artist working really hard and doing all this really cool stuff yeah. and being acknowledged by you who are the one that created it in the first place. And I think it's like, it's this really cool, interesting thing. And I'm very excited to see where situations like this end up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, like, that's another cool thing about this whole, like, not that Instagram Live just came around because of this, but like, you know, it's definitely being, it's utilized, being utilized a lot more. It's the meat on, um, the, on the dish now. So it's cool that, like, you know, you can hang out with, with this guy in, in yeah. New York and, like, you know. Trade secrets <laughs> yeah. about drumming. <laughs> but, <laughs> so here's how you get rid of a dead body. <laughs> so Michael, thank you, thank you again for being on the podcast. Thank you it's so much for having me again. Always a great time to have conversations with you on record and off record. Yeah. <laughs> What's next for you? Um, I guess just seeing what you know, seeing what comes. Um, I'm not at liberty to discuss certain things, but practicing, getting better. Mm-hmm. Hanging out with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Feeding the dog. Petting the dog. I'm a big dog guy. That's good. I love the dog. <laughs> That's about it. All right, good. Thanks. <laughs>
I'd like to thank Mike Sleeth for being on the podcast. Be sure to check him out on all his social media platforms. I'll leave links for everything in the description too. Be sure to follow Sean Mendes as well to find out when they will be premiering another one of the Wondery residency videos that they've worked on. His Netflix documentary will be out on November 3rd and his full album on December 4th. So check out that and I'm sure there'll be lots of really cool stuff coming up. We would like to thank our sponsors, Hailed Coffee. Check them out at Gerard and Bay. Go to their website. Be sure to buy lots of coffee. We would also like to thank Richard Atkin at Flickly.com, who is doing some wonderful animation work for us. Please subscribe, leave a comment, set your notifications for the video on YouTube. But also, if you want to listen to the audio of the podcast, we're at Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Music Play. Wherever you get your podcasts, we are there. And wherever you do listen, if you could rate and subscribe, that would be fantastic. So for Mike Sleeth, I'm Michael McDonnell. Episode 109 is in the books. We'll see you next week. This is my face.